Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You can have a seat for a moment and then turn to the book of John chapter 14. That is where my text will be coming from. I want to thank God for this uh, opportunity to share the word of God with you. And also for the invitation from the prophetess, the woman of God. Um, and for the burden that she has for this city. And for the voice she has heard from God. This is a ministry that will grow. This is a ministry that will expand. That's what God told me about this ministry. This, this vision will grow. This vision will expand. This vision will become great. It will affect a lot of people around this country and in other countries, neighboring countries. This vision will grow. Amen? Amen. My name is Pastor Patrick Musioka Musioki. I serve with Redeemed Gospel Church in Earth River in a place called Bakadara. And I thank the Lord for this opportunity. It's great to see this great man of God. Once again, Bishop, God bless you. And all the others, the Lord bless you. Thank you for that wonderful session of worship. I want to share with you for a few minutes and then we pray. And then we go on from John 14, 26. The Bible says, but the counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything that I have told you. That, that verse refers to the Holy Spirit. Even before you get to that verse, uh, to the content of that verse, just the way he's addressed as the Holy Spirit. I just want to talk about that name. Not, uh, I, I won't be able because of time to get to the content. As we believe God for the invasion of the Holy Spirit in Nairobi and Nairobi Metropolis, because now Nairobi has expanded and there are other towns around about Nairobi that uh, are becoming part of the city. Nowadays, uh, you cannot know where the boundary between Nairobi and Mololongo and that river and Tukongela is. It's becoming a metropolis. And, and so as we believe God for the invasion of the Holy Spirit, in Nairobi Metropolis, I would like us to consider the fact that uh, his name denotes the fact that he is holy. That he is holy. Uh, and that uh, his character is clean. His character is righteous. I know there is a lot of benefits of the Holy Spirit that people like to have. But the first thing is that we must desire to attain holiness with God. If we want the, the Holy Spirit to be, to be part of us as a city. And I want to submit to you that holiness is not attained by rebuking sin. Holiness is attained by practicing holiness. If you rebuke sin during the day, and you practice sin during the night, you cannot carry a spirit of holiness. But you really don't have to attack people because of their sins if you are holy. The righteousness and the holiness in you will invade the lives of people. And people will suddenly begin to realize that when they when you mean it, when they come to your fellowship, that things that used to bind them and sins and vices that used to bind them now are broken and they no longer have a desire to smoke anymore. They no longer have a desire to drink anymore. They no longer have that desire to live in sin because sin is within the desires of people. And so as we desire to have the Holy Spirit come into this city, we must prioritize living holy lives as men of God so that we may be able to bring up people within the pews that are holy. But not only men of God that are holy, we also need people within our congregations that lead a righteous life. We cannot have preachers who are holy only. 
we need congregants who value and walk in holiness. And it is dangerous, I'm telling you, for a preacher to be preaching to people who are consistently refusing to leave sin, refusing to change. Your destiny as a preacher, you must, we must pray. Let me not say you. Let me say we, because I am also part of you. We must consistently pray that our people will depart from sin. Because if they don't depart from sin, they will infect us with their sins. And we will not see God. There was a holy man of God in the, in the book of Exodus. His name was Moses. When Moses left Egypt, when he began with God, he was a righteous man. He was a holy man. The Bible says that the man Moses was the weakest man under the sun. He was a righteous man. But he was leading a group of people that the Lord described as stiff naked, as rebellious people, as disobedient people. Story. In the book of Deuteronomy, Moses says, and the Lord our God told me that I will not enter that, that holy land because of disobedience, because of rebellion. Where did the meekest man, the most righteous man on earth, receive? Where did he get disobedience? Where did he get rebellion? He got it from the people he was leading. They, they vexed his soul. They, 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 ah, they pressured him until he acted in disobedience. We must desire, in as much as we want to be ministers who are holy, we must desire also to see that holiness in our congregants. So that we all, together with our congregants, can see the promised land. Because if we don't do that, we will not be able to achieve what we want in that the Holy Spirit uh, will invade this city and stay. The most important thing is not for him to come. The most important thing is for him to come and stay. It is a terrible thing for the Holy Spirit to come and then use you and then leave you. I know people that were being used by God and then he left. And those are the most miserable Christians I know. They fight everybody. They are full of war. Because you know the terrible thing about when the Holy Spirit leaves you is that you see he, he, doesn't go, he doesn't leave you and go back to heaven. He leaves you and go to another brother or to another sister. And when you see that brother and that sister ministering, something in you knows that should have been me. That's how he wanted to use me. But he can no longer use me because I did not live in holiness. May we, be, may we have a desire to live in holiness. Somebody say amen. Holiness is important. My second last point is that holiness is important because holy people have the ear of God. Sodom and Gomorrah would have been there today if there was only five holy people. Five. Can you imagine? And they were not found. That number was not found. And you see, my friend, this city, if we can get a group of holy people, even those attacks that God is talking about, these holy people can talk to God and God can spare our city. Our city. Somebody say amen. And you know Nairobi is a city that needs a lot of intercession. I personally live in Machakos, but I have lived in Nairobi before. I live in Machakos. And I can tell you that there used to be a time when churches outside Nairobi used to admire the preachers of Nairobi, the, the congregations of Nairobi, the move of God in Nairobi. And churches outside Nairobi desired a lot to form themselves around, uh, around about the churches in Nairobi. But I will humbly tell you that now it is no longer so. Outside Nairobi, people fear preachers in Nairobi because of the things that you know, Nairobi has become a very permissive city. When we began, this brother asked us to pray that 
this type of permissiveness, unnecessary clubbing may be driven, that spirit may be driven out of the city. And you see, it, it is because now the permissiveness in this city now allows uh, worship leaders to, to club and come and lead worship on Sunday morning. Preachers who come to the pulpit while drunk for more inspiration. Things that are happening in this city, those people that are outside this city, we no longer admire and want to form ourselves around the crowd. And so now, my friends, if we want the invasion of the Holy Spirit in this city, we must desire holiness. We must desire holiness. We, we, the Holy Spirit is clean. He's holy. He doesn't go to unclean places. He doesn't fellowship with unclean people. You know where I come from? We have a holy man of God called Bishop Joseph Bishop Mutua. I can say I have seen a holy man. Machakos is one of the most peaceful cities in this country. You know when it is at night and you need to buy something, medicine or something, we go to the ghetto in Machakos. You can go to the ghetto in Machakos at 2 a.m. to buy medicine and nothing will happen to you. The atmosphere in the city is peaceful. And God told me because there is a holy man of God in the city. If we can get holy men and women of God in this city, the crime rates in Nairobi will go down. The prostitution in this city will go down. The rebellion in this city will go down. The Holy Spirit wants to invade this city through holy men and holy women of God. Amen. Amen. Let's give him a clap. Amen. You see, God is so practical. He will, yes, very practical. He will tell us how to live in order for him to come. 